Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I last posted. I've been caught up with work, but I'm back with a new tutorial. And in the meantime, we've hit 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for the support. It really means a lot. Today, I'm going to show you how to create this interactive service section in Figma. You've probably seen this kind of modern interactive layout on websites, so I thought, why not break it down in a tutorial? So without further ado, let's get started. I've already prepared the assets for the design. That includes the text content, images, by the way, the images are from Lummy, color palettes, and so on. All right, let's dive into the design. First, I'm placing the copy text here, along with the icons. For the design, I've used solid colors for the headings and a lighter shade for the paragraph text. Next, I'll select all of this and apply an auto layout. Now, I'll place the icons inside a frame. Then I select the text again and apply another auto layout. After that, I'll select the parent frame, change its layout to horizontal, fix the width to 609 so it aligns perfectly to the grid, and add a 16px gap between the texts. I've also renamed the frame for better organization. Once everything is in place, I'll make this a component. Now we're going to add properties to this component so we can easily update the text for all other instances. To do that, select the heading text, click on these icons and click on plus icon, name the property and click create property. That's it. Repeat the same process for the description text as well. Next, let's add a variant to this component. All right. So to add a variant, I'm going to start by clicking this plus icon. Then from the drop down, I'll select variant and right here, yep, I'm clicking on this little plus icon again. And just like that, we've got another variant. Now, in this new variant, I'll hide the description. I think it needs a bit more padding in both variants to look better. So let's fix that. Now, I'm going to make a few small adjustments to the component frame, just cleaning things up a bit. Next, we need to add a line between each variant. To do that, I'll select both variants and add a stroke. Here, I'm changing the stroke color to our brand color. Then, I'll click on this icon. This is where the stroke settings are. And choose the bottom stroke, so the line only shows up at the bottom. To smooth things out, I'm changing the stroke endpoints to round. And I think the stroke color should sit at around 15% opacity. Yeah, that looks good now. For the first component, I'm going to rotate the icon 45 degrees. So, it looks like a close icon. This will give a nice transition effect during prototyping. Finally, I'm going to rename the variants to opened and closed, just to make things easier to identify at a glance. Now. I'll copy the first variant into a new frame. I've already created a feature section frame with a basic title and short description. I'll paste the component here and start designing the rest of the section. This frame already has a column grid with 120px margins and five columns, so everything stays aligned. Now, I'm changing it to 12 columns to give us more flexibility. Next, I'll select all the images and paste them into the frame. I've stacked them on top of each other and aligned them to the grid. Adding a 40px corner radius to make them look more modern. Once that's done, I'll duplicate the text component three times and update the content. Since we've added properties to the components, changing the text is super easy. Just select the component and on the right panel, you'll see the title and paragraph fields. Update them there. Repeat this for all components. Now I'll select all of them and apply auto layout with a bit of spacing in between. Then I'll group all the images into one frame. Select the image frame and text frame and apply auto layout again. Everything looks neat and well aligned now. Once we're ready, I'll drag the whole frame out. 
Now, I'll select all the text components except the first one and change their variant to closed. Then I'll select all the images except the first one and set their opacity to zero. This adds a smooth transition effect when toggling between them. Now I'll select the entire frame, make it a component, and name it Services. Let's add variants now. For the second variant, I'll set the first text component to Closed and the second one to Open. I'll also set the first image's opacity to 0% and the second image to 100%. Now, I'll add another variant. Repeat the same steps for the third component and third image. And finally, one more variant, same process for the fourth and final one. Now that all the variants are done, it's time to prototype. Click on the Prototype tab on the first var. On the first variant, connect the plus icon to the second variant. Set the interaction settings to Trigger to Tap, Animation to Smart Animate, Easing to Gentle, Duration 800 milliseconds. Repeat the same for the connections to the third and fourth variants, keeping all prototype settings the same. Like this, connect all the icons to respected variants with same prototype settings. Now all the variants are ready. Now copy the first variant and paste it into our main frame like this. Do the necessary tweaks and make sure to align everything perfectly inside the frame. Once everything ready, let's play the animation. And wow, everything works perfectly. You can now see how the section transitions smoothly. This is exactly how modern websites build these interactive service or feature sections. Try it yourself, and don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you recreate this. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And if there's a specific topic you want me to cover, let me know. I'd love to make a tutorial on it. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.